Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Last week, we checked out the Radeon RX 7000 XT for the first time, and we found it to be surprisingly good value at $500 US. It certainly took it to the more expensive GeForce RTX 4070, but our day one review only included 15 games. So today, we're going much more in-depth with a 45-game sample, but before we do... Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Ugreen and their first Nexo 300 watt GAN charger, featuring a single dedicated 140 watt output and PD 3.1 charging to facilitate incredibly fast charging. Included are four USB Type C ports supporting 45 watt, 100 watt, and 140 watt outputs, along with a single 22.5 watt USB Type A port. Then for that peace of mind, Ugreen's Thermal Guard protects your devices from overheating and or overcharging. The Nexo 300 watt is fully compatible with laptops, smartphones, tablets, and all other portable devices, and with a small form factor, it reduces clutter and unnecessary cables. It can even charge three laptops simultaneously, so for more information, please check the links in the video description. Okay, so we have a massive head-to-head -head between the $600 US GeForce RTX 4070 and $500 US Radeon RX 7800 XT. There's really not much more to say, so let's go over the test system specs, and then of course we'll jump into all of those benchmarks. So for testing, the CPU used is the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, which has been paired with the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master using 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 CL30 memory. As usual, we'll go over the data for around a dozen of the titles tested before jumping into the big breakdown graphs. And the resolution of interest here is 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. In total, I've tested 56 different configurations. And as usual, all of the data is updated and new for this video. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's start with Starfield, an AMD sponsored title that's known for its less than stellar optimization and unexplainably poor performance when using GeForce GPUs. Oh, and did I mention it's an AMD sponsored title? Anyway, we have 45 games in total, so a sponsored title here and there isn't going to skew the results. And you best believe we have plenty of NVIDIA sponsored titles in here as well. At 1080p, the 7800 XT was 22% faster. 23% faster at 1440p and 24% faster at 4K. So a clear win here for the Radeon GPU and pretty good performance at the lower resolutions. Baldur's Gate 3 is another newly released mega title and this one's sponsored by Nvidia. And yet despite that, it does run well on AMD hardware and performance overall is very good for this one, providing you have a snappy CPU. And we're looking at a high refresh rate experience at 1080p, which isn't really required to play this game with over 150 FPS, and we're testing in the Baldur's Gate City. Performance at 1440p is also much the same, and it's not until we jump up to the 4K resolution that the 7800 XT is able to pull ahead by an 8% margin. Next up, we have Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and this one does play best on the GeForce GPU, with the RTX 4070 delivering between 13 and 15% greater performance, depending on the resolution. The difference will be most noticeable at 4K though, where going from 49 FPS to 56 FPS is quite a jump in performance. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, we find that the 7800 XT was good for 142 FPS at 1080p using the high quality preset, making it 9% faster than the RTX 4070. That margin blows out to 16% at 1440p and then 22% at 4K, though you will require upscaling support at 4K. Now, if we enable ray tracing in Cyberpunk, the 7800 XT runs into all sorts of performance related problems, mostly that of shockingly low frame rates. We're looking at just 37 FPS at 1080p, making the RTX 4070 a massive 57% faster with a playable 58 frames per second. Of course, you could enable upscaling here, but expect the uplift to be about the same for both GPUs as FSR and DLSS does scale evenly in this title. The Callisto Protocol results are quite competitive. The 7800 XT did manage to nose ahead, but we're only talking about a mere 4% margin at 1080p and 1440p. We're also looking at just a 5% margin at 4K, and overall both GPUs did deliver excellent performance here. Surprisingly, the ray tracing performance was also very competitive in this title, and frame rates overall were again very good at 1080p and 1440p, where the 7800 XT was 2% and 11% faster respectively. We did see a big 19% win for the Radeon GPU at 4K, though performance overall wasn't that impressive. 
Next up, we have Fortnite, and this is a game you typically want to play using the DirectX 11 API, as performance is generally better with smoother frame times, making it more suitable for competitive gameplay. And for this reason, the performance mode used by all the pro Fortnite players is based on the DirectX 11 mode. Unfortunately for AMD though, their DX11 performance in Fortnite has almost always been subpar, and we see here that the RTX 4070 is 26% faster at 1080p, and 15% faster at 1440p. That said, the 4070 does suffer due to a lack of memory bandwidth at 4K, allowing the 7800 XT to nudge ahead by a mere 3% margin. However, if for some reason you want to play Fortnite with ray tracing enabled, you'll have to use the DirectX 12 mode, and here the Radeon GPU does perform much better relative to the GeForce GPU. As you can see, the 7800 XT was 11% faster at 1080p, 9% faster at 1440p, and basically identical at 4K. Resident Evil 4 runs very well on both AMD and Nvidia hardware, and using the second highest quality preset, both GPUs pumped out over 170 FPS at 1080p. And then we see that the 7800 XT was 6% faster at 1440p, and 12% faster at 4K. Then using the maximum quality preset, which enables ray tracing by default, we find almost identical performance at 1080p, though the 7800 XT did pull ahead at 1440p by a 6% margin, and then 16% at 4K, which did lead to a noticeable improvement. Spider-Man Remastered has proven to be a well-optimized title, and here we're seeing excellent performance from both GPUs. With over 200 FPS rendered at 1080p, the RTX 4070 was just 4% faster, and then we're looking at very similar performance at 1440p and 4K. Even with ray tracing enabled, performance overall is very good and very competitive between these two GPUs. We are CPU limited at 1080p, but that's not the case at 1440p and 4K, where performance overall was virtually identical. Hogwarts Legacy is one of the more demanding games to be released this year, but even so, the 7800 XT performs very well, delivering 20% more performance than the RTX 4070 at 1080p, and a massive 28% faster at 1440p, before the margins start to close back up at 4K, though an 18% increase is still very handy here. The ray tracing results are a bit all over the place. At 1080p, we are CPU limited to just shy of 60 FPS, though we did see better 1% lows with the RTX 4070. Then at 1440p, we're seeing the true ray tracing performance of these GPUs, and it's here that the RTX 4070 is 21% faster. But by the time we hit the 4K resolution, the RTX 4070 does run out of VRAM, and performance tanks as a result, though even with enough VRAM, performance is still pretty horrible on the 7800 XT. The last game that we're going to look at the individual results for is Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and with epic quality settings enabled, the 7800 XT was 15% faster at 1080p, 14% faster at 1440p, and then identical performance was seen at the 4K resolution. Now, if we enable ray tracing, the 4070 hits the lead, delivering 9% more performance at 1080p and 6% more at 1440p, but the GeForce GPU does run out of memory bandwidth at 4K and therefore can't outperform the 7800 XT, though both were only good for around 30 FPS anyway. Okay, so we've just had a look at almost a dozen of the 45 games tested, some with and some without ray tracing enabled. So now it's time to see how these two GPUs compare across all of the games tested. So let's go do that, starting with the 1080p data. Here's a look at all 56 configurations tested at 1080p, and overall performance is very similar between these two GPUs. The 7800 XT was just 3% faster on average, which means typically speaking performance is going to be very similar. That said, there were examples where the Radeon GPU was faster by a 20% margin or more, and some where it was slower by a 20% margin or more. If we remove the ray tracing data, we find that the 7800 XT was 5% faster on average, so again, basically a tie between these two GPUs. There were certainly more examples where the Radeon GPU was significantly faster, but with well over half of the game seeing single digit margins, there's generally not a lot in it. Surprisingly, it's a similar story when looking at the ray tracing results in the 13 games tested. The only bad result here for the 7800 XT was seen in Cyberpunk 2077, resulting in a 4% loss overall. Still, there were a few wins here for the Radeon GPU, so certainly not a disaster on the ray tracing front. Now, at 1440p, we find similar margins to that of the mixed workload 1080p data, though instead of 3% faster, the 7800 XT is now 5% faster on average, so overall performance was again very similar with no clear winner. 
Now, removing the ray tracing results bumps the 7800 XT up slightly. Now it is 7% faster on average. It's clear based on this graph that the Radeon GP will generally deliver better rasterization performance, and in a select few instances the gains can be massive. And again, we find that the ray tracing results are very competitive between these two GPUs, at least overall. The 7800 XT still gets annihilated in Cyberpunk 2077, and it's particularly unimpressive in Hogwarts Legacy, Dying Light 2, and Hitman 3. Still, it does well in Resident Evil 4, Forza Horizon 5, Fortnite, and Far Cry 6. Then finally, at 4K, the 7800 XT enjoys its biggest margin yet of 8%, and this is no doubt helped by a massive win in Hogwarts Legacy using ray tracing, where the RTX 4070 ran out of VRAM, but really performance for both GPUs was terrible anyway. And Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where the RTX 4070 only managed 70 FPS, whereas the 7800 XT was good for 104 FPS using the ultra high preset. Now, if you remove those two outliers, the 7800 XT was 6% faster on average, which is a win, but overall, I think it's close enough to call this one a tie. Again, if we remove the ray tracing results, the 7800 XT is 8% faster on average. And again, it's Assassin's Creed Valhalla that's an issue for the RTX 4070 at 4K. There were very few examples where the Radeon GPU lost by a 10% margin, with almost 20 examples where it was more than 10% faster. Finally, the 4K ray tracing data, which in a lot of instances, it is a bit meaningless due to the very low frame rates, such as the big win for the 7800 XT and Hogwarts Legacy. If you remove that result, the 7800 XT ends up being just 2% faster on average. That said, the Radeon GPU suffered its worst loss in Cyberpunk 2077, and here the GeForce GPU did only manage 17 FPS. So, as I said, a lot of the 4K ray tracing data is a bit meaningless, but in any case, for those of you interested, you can quickly see how these two GPUs compare. Okay, so generally speaking, in terms of performance, the 7800 XT and RTX 4070 are very evenly matched, though depending on the games you play, one could be quite a bit faster than the other. So it is well worth researching the performance for the titles you're most interested in. More often than not, the 7800 XT is going to be the better performer when it comes to rasterization, while the RTX 4070 is generally superior for ray tracing. The key advantage of the GeForce GPU is DLSS support and frame generation, at least for certain single player titles. Of course, we know AMD's FSR 3 is incoming, but we have no idea how well it works or if it's even going to be a true competitor to DLSS 3. The RTX 4070 is also more power efficient. It's not a massive difference, but in our testing, you can reduce power usage by around 50 watts for a similar level of performance. So certainly not nothing. Then the key advantage of the Radeon RX 7800 XT is the extra four gigabytes of VRAM, packing a 16 gigabyte buffer, and generally faster rasterization performance, though as we just saw, there's not always a lot in it. And then of course, there's the big one, the price. And the US MSRP is heavily in AMD's favor with the 7800 XT priced $100 US lower, and that's a nice 17% discount. And given that, the Radeon GPU is quite clearly the obvious choice, at least in my opinion, as it offers just a lot more value. However, that might not be true for all of you. And that's because outside of the US, the 7800 XT pricing, it's, well, it's just not always that competitive. For example, here in Australia, you can easily purchase an RTX 4070 for 890 Australian dollars, whereas the most affordable 7800 XTs currently cost just $10 less at $880 AUD. So in other words, the 7800 XT and RTX 4070 occupy the same price point here in Australia, and that is true for a lot of other regions. Meanwhile, over in the US, there are five RTX 4070 models available at the $600 US MSRP over at Newegg.com, whereas there's just a single 7800 XT at $500 US with three models listed, but the rest out of stock. And one of those models is AMD's reference version. So the majority of 7800 XT seem to be priced between $520 and $540 US. Still, that is a good bit cheaper than the RTX 4070. And of course, the 7800 XT was just released last week, while the RTX 4070 has been out in the wild for five months now. So, 7800 XT pricing and availability will no doubt improve over the coming weeks and months, 
But still, here in Australia, the 7800 XT would need to drop to 740 AUD in order to deliver the same great value that we're seeing over in the US. And I'm not convinced that's going to happen anytime soon. I'd say the 7800 XT has to be at least 10% cheaper than the RTX 4070 to be an automatic purchase, and that means 800 Australian dollars is the most AMD can charge. It's a real shame, as the 7800 XT is such great value over in the US, but pretty weak in most other regions. Hopefully this is just an early availability issue and pricing will correct shortly. And lastly, I did run into a few stability concerns with the 7800 XT, with constant crashing an F123 using the high preset, which is a bit odd as the ultra high preset seemed to work okay. Cyberpunk 2077 was also unstable in our testing, especially when using ray tracing, and it's difficult to say if this is just an issue on our end or a problem with the current driver. I did spend several hours trying to solve this issue without success, and interestingly, the 7900 XT didn't suffer the same stability issues in the games just mentioned, so I think this is just an issue with the initial driver release that should be sorted shortly. So in summary, for those of you in the US, the 7800 XT for $500 is the obvious choice. $100 is just a massive discount, and unless you specifically need a GeForce GPU, I'd ignore the RTX 4070 and go with the 7800 XT. However, if pricing in your region looks more like it does here in Australia, you could really go either way, and stuff like frame generation and better power efficiency does make a strong case for the RTX 4070. Of course, let me know which of these GPUs you think's better, and I'll be sure to read your comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe for more content because we always have more GPU and CPU and other content coming up on the channel. There could be some very interesting stuff coming later this month, so make sure you are subscribed. Also, you can support us and get some cool perks in return if you subscribe to our Floatplane or Patreon accounts, links for those in the video description. You get access to stuff like monthly live streams. Tim and I get together, we answer your questions live and talk about whatever's been happening throughout the month. We have Q&A stuff, behind the scenes content, and an exclusive Discord server, which is a very cool place to hang out and talk tech. So yeah. But if, you, if you're not interested in that, then, you know, that's fine. I won't hold it against you. You don't have to subscribe to those accounts, but maybe check them out. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. <laughs> See you again next time.